Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Advamp here. Today, I'm playing uh, Mountain Blade Warband. It's definitely not a newer game. Uh, I've been playing this for a while now. I actually had to go away for a little while. And um, I didn't have internet access where I was. So I played the hell out of this game. And uh, it's it's very simple. The combat system is really fun. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. So right now I'm looking for the king because I'm actually trying to sabotage the king's friendship with somebody to gain favor of uh, one of the Jarls. So I'm looking for somebody that I can talk to about where the king is. And uh, it's not really easy for me at the moment for whatever reason. I can't really seem to find anyone. Um, we'll go to this major town here. See how well this works out. It's a pretty decent sized map. You got, you know, green is all these other colonies, and blue is the one that I'm part of now. Uh, purple, you know, they're their own. Yellow is almost completely phased out. They got a few major cities left, but. King Ragnar has decided to confer. Yeah, so he just gave a territory to that Jarl right there. There's bandits and deserters and all kinds of crazy people everywhere. Oh, who's this? Oh. Let's uh, see if we... Okay, he's going at 3.9. I'm going at 5.7. Yeah, I'll be able to catch up with this guy. And I'll ask him where the king is. So I became a part of the Nords. And um, they're kind of the barbaric type people, but they're, they're civilized as well. They're just the most barbaric out of all of them. So, okay, so I try to get him to agree with me that I should receive uh, Elberl, which I believe is either a castle or a, a small settlement, but he believes that with my accomplishments, I already have as many, oh, sorry about that, uh, that I already have, you know, enough territories in my possession so okay so I'm gonna ask him where King Ragnar is close to Yejeg however you say that at the moment so I'm gonna find Yejeg see where is that is it big town is it a small town Yejeg Yejeg I don't know where that is I'm going to head towards here because a little while ago I heard that there was going to be a tournament here. So I'm going to give that a good look. Tournaments pay out a lot of money in this too. Right now I have 8,000 8, uh, gold and I've been saving that for a long time. Ooh, ooh, let me pick a fight with these deserters. Yeah, when I'm done with you, you're going to regret this. Charge. get my little jousting stick here and this thing does an insane amount of damage as long as they don't block it see I just killed that guy pull out my sword and go ahead and dismount so the combat system in this is it looks really dumb to be honest with you but if you actually if you actually look you block in the direction that they swing. So if they're attacking from over the head, you have to hold the block button and aim upward. And then he kind of see raises his sword like that. And it's the same with attacking. Stab and attack, you look down. Uh, side attack, you look left or right. And then up over the head, you look up and click. easy day and then so here we captured a couple of their enemies or sorry of my enemies so you can click on them and decide to capture them and you can sell them for a ransom or you can later on recruit them and then if you see these plus signs like this guy it means they leveled up so I can level this guy up I forgot how to do that actually oh I have to talk to him on his own because those are uh, like special characters. 
So this is their the loot that I got from them. That's pretty good. Yeah, not quite up to par with mine, but I can take all these and sell them or equip my my special characters with them. So what I can do is go here, down here to party, click on this, and this Borcha guy. So anybody with a name is going to be a special character. These other guys are just Nord Veteran and Vagir Horsemen. They're just people from uh, specific settlements, but they're just standard people. All these guys are specials because they actually have a name. So got to talk to him, tell me about your skills, and then I could level him up. So I'm going to put some into intelligence. That seems to be a strong suit. And then see I can teach him first aid, sur uh, surgery, wound treatment, all this stuff to uh, to help out the entire team. So I'm going to give him some tactics. Every two levels of this skill gives you an advantage by one. So you can just click on that and see now I automatically get five points from this guy. And he's focused around one-handed weapons. So I'll increase that for him. Yeah, this is easy as that. Let's do that with all these guys real quick. Teach me about your skills. Okay. Uh, oh, he's he. So I already clicked on this guy, but he still has another skill that I can use. So I will put tracking down. Okay. Now this guy. Let me see your skills. Uh, now this guy's all about agility, so I'm gonna click on that. And let's see. Looting. Let's learn some more looting. And he is really good with everything, but mostly one-handed. So I'm going to increase his one-handed. There you go. It's that easy. Alright, so I'm going to keep heading towards... Oops, sorry, not Kura. I'm heading towards... Actually, mm, yeah, not there. Revadin. Because like I said, there was supposed to be a tournament going on. I'm going to try to win it. If I lose, whatever. And then another thing you gotta keep an eye on. See, it says 87 plus 2. So the plus 2 is the two prisoners. And the 87 is my actual group. And if you click on inventory. See, I only have two pieces of bread. And three items of grain. So if this runs out, it's gonna drop my party morale a lot. Because then we're not gonna have any food. So while I'm in Rivadin, I'm gonna go ahead and buy some food as well. And so, generally, so you can place bets on yourself in these tournaments. Ah, see. Tournament, join the tournament. So, you can place bets on yourself. Place a bet on yourself of 100 dinars. But you see, if you bet 100 dinars, you'll earn 1,300 dinars if you win because the odds are against you. Because you're betting on yourself in the very beginning. And it, like, there's only one winner, but you phase out people as you go on. So I am green. I'm part of the green team. There's three teams here. And you're basically you're just trying to knock each other out, that's all it is. Just gonna hit this person till yep, now she's down. And I could actually choose to steal that horse if I really wanted to. Block that. Oop. I don't necessarily have to win, but the green team does. Block that. Knock him out. Oh, because I have a shield, I don't actually have to choose the direction I'm blocking. I can just <clears throat> hold it up like this. And if there's something coming up above, I just look up. See how it raises the shield automatically? So, Alright, so I can place another bet on myself. So odds are 10 to 1. So earn another 13 or so. So, go ahead and place $100 dollars down. Go ahead. Fight next round. Yeah, it's not giving me a horse. It will give you a horse every now and then. So, this time it's two teams, red versus blue. <clears throat> One thing I noticed is uh, with this, it always seems like your teammates are weaker than the people you're going up against. So, a lot of people would be like, oh, why don't you just wait? And, uh, and you know, let them fight it out and then just take out the stragglers. Well, if I do that, then it's going to be a huge unmatched thing and 
Okay, this guy's chopped me up. Oh. You also do bonus damage if you uh, get a reversal in there, so. I like to try to block and then follow up with a hit. It's always really awkward when you're on a horse and you get stuck up against a wall. There you go. Last man standing. Place another bet on myself. Seven to one now. Fight next round. Right, so now it's a three on three. But they get a horse for some reason. I'm going to help them take out this horse real quick. Oh. Just came up and stabbed him in the back there. Place another bet on myself. You want to bet on yourself every round. And if you look up here, it tells you what you're doing too. So, tier 4 of the tournament, 8 participants remaining. In the next round, there will be 3 teams with 2 fighters each. Also, this time I get a horse and a lance. Ah, oh, missed. Alright, so I'm red. Yeah, horse and lance kind of suck sometimes. I guess I do plenty of damage. It's pretty much an instant kill if you hit them. The problem is, is hitting them. Especially, you see how he, like, he keeps running at me like that, too? And I have to be able to charge up my attack. Because it, it puts the post down automatically. And I have to be riding for a certain amount of time before it'll put the post down. Ah, see that? Yeah, so they can just kind of run around. Yeah, it's terrible. Right, let's see if these guys... I think that guy had a two-handed sword. Two-handed swords are my specialty. It's, um... My character does the most damage with them, so... Find a good spot here. Try to dismount. See, I can't block or anything with this. It's useless. Oh, it's not two-handed. Ouch. Normally one-on-one -on -one fights in this game aren't that big of a deal. There he goes. Place another bet on myself. So, four participants, two fighters of two. Two teams of two. Now, this guy's a lance, so I gotta be really careful about this guy. Try to take him out right away. There you go, easy. Place another bet on myself. Two teams, one fighter each. So this is the final round. And he's on a horse. I really hope he doesn't have a lance. He doesn't. Alright, this shouldn't even be a problem. trick is to kind of try to stay on his ass. There he goes. Oh, that was just his horse. Oh, he got a hit on me there. Oh. Oh, he broke my... This is awkward. Right, I'm going to have to go for parries then. There you go. Alright, money's mine. All right, so I made three thousand nine hundred and eighty dollars, as well as a prize of two hundred. All right, so now we can go to the castle, try to find out where the king is. At the field should be close to Sargoth. Awesome, Sargoth is the main city that the king normally resides in. 
So I need to go here. Sargoth. But first off, almost forgot, I need to buy some food. So I'll go to the goods merchant. Let's buy some of this grain. Grain lasts a good amount of time, so does bread. And I can buy a pork just for mor morale purposes. And I'll sell back this uh, armor and this sword. Get some of that money back. There you go. Okay, now should be fine for the journey to Sargoth. My one of my only complaints about this would be to um, be able to fast forward through this travel time. It's crazy. I don't know if you guys hear that, but the crowd is still cheering. It's really eerie. I don't know what's up with that. Yeah, it's pretty odd. Maybe when I get to Sargoth, that'll stop. If you're wondering what these little arrows are, it tells you how long ago they made that track. So as you can see, it says an hour. So time is actually going by pretty quickly while I'm on the horse. And uh, it tells me... Normally, it'll tell me like how big. Yeah, see the party size, 80 to 89, which is spot on considering I have 89. So yeah, if I'm if I'm tracking enemies, for example, it'll tell me like how many people are in their party. So if there's like 300 of them, obviously I'm not gonna want to pick a fight with them if I only have 87. So okay, we're here in Sargoth. We'll go to the castle. All right, and we're back to the castle now. I had to, to reset the game to get rid of that annoying cheering noise. Alright, so the king isn't here. Let me talk to her. I want the location of the king. He's close to Kern Castle. Alright. So, where is Kern Castle? Right there. Alright, sweet. We should be able to catch him then. There he is. King Ragnar's potty. Yeah, he travels with a good size amount of people. Obviously, he's the king. If I were to try to kill him right now, I'd surely lose. But it also makes me faster than him, so that's useful. There you go, alright. Um, let's see. I'm gonna ask you something. Let's see, I'm supposed to tell him. I'm supposed to tell him that I don't like some other guy. But it's not giving me the option to. Let me look at that, uh... Oops. Look at that note again. Denounce Lord. So you intend to privately denounce Jarl Regis to King Ragnar. Which is the guy that I'm with right now. Okay, well let me ask him where Regis is. Is he dead or something? He must be dead. Well, that's awkward. I'm not going to be able to complete that now. Well, it's not uncommon for these people to die, so... Alright, well, I guess I'll do a different quest then. So I need to find Jarl Rockabarth. I need to denounce him to his face. So let me ask where Jarl Rockabarth is. He isn't here either. It's so odd. 
Okay, well, can't really do that then. I do have a good amount of money though, so if I look in my reports and look in. Is it courtship? No. Is it? Faction relations? No. So one of these will tell me, okay, here's the estates I own. So Bal uh, Balanli, Ribolet, Nemesia, Hain, and Colum. So I want to go to one of those places and uh, try to upgrade it. Okay, Colum's all the way over here. Um, here's Ribolet here. Alright, let me try to go to Cullum. And I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this, and I'll see you guys when I get there. So I just brought you back real quick so you can look at this, because this popped up on my way to uh, roll them. So you get a weekly budget thing. Because of my party size, it's minus 2,600. But as you can see, I own a couple of like ironworks and oil press and, and the rents from the... the cities that I own those all give me money they kind of counteract it so unfortunately even though all that money would add up to a lot I'm only actually getting 524 but I'll see you in Rolom Alright, we're here in Rolum now. So what I can do here, I can uh, recruit some volunteers. So one dude is like, hey man, I'll join you. So I go to recruit him for 10 bucks. He's just a recruit though, so he's pretty useless at the moment until I train him or he gains some experience through combat. So I can click on manage this village. And I can build all these things. So you click on one, it tells you what they do. Um, message your post, let's see inhabitants send you a message whenever enemies are nearby even if you are far away from here as a party member with the highest engineer skill five uh, Marnid reckons that the building the messenger post will cost you three thousand dinars and will take up to thirty three days so click forget it and each one of these does something else So, not even sure what benefit that gives you but it costs six thousand dollars build a mill uh, increase prosperity by 5%. Uh, build a school. Increase the loyalty of the villages by plus 1 every month. That's pretty useful. Your own villages can actually hate you. Because sometimes you can, you know, uh, when you're at war with someone, you can, you know, take out a village and plunder it and take all the stuff. But then everybody in that village still stays there, regardless of the fact that your faction owns it now so they'll hate you because you know they seen you go in there and plunder their village so uh, that would be pretty useful I don't think the eight guys hate me but I'm gonna go ahead and build that anyway so after 70 days I can come back here and uh, build another add-on alright so now I'm gonna head to Praven so I will see you guys in Praven Alright guys, we're back, and I made it to Praven. Uh, I didn't really come here for any specific reason, I just don't really have a quest that I can do at the moment, so... Okay, this guy's selling books. Now these books are actually really good, because they'll, while they're in your inventory, they'll increase one of your skills. So, uh, I am too dumb to read this book, it looks like. Requires 11 intelligence. Actually, I don't know if I'm too dumb or not. Let me take a look. Um, oop, wrong button. Wrong button again. Oop, the wrong button, definitely. Okay. So, I can click on... Characters, right? Snake. That's me. Right there. That's me. Right there. This guy. Uh, okay. That's not the information I needed. Okay. 
There's got to be a... Oh, no, no, no. Oh, Jesus. Game log? No. Nope. No. No? No. Oh, yeah. I am married to Lady Gudrun. So that's a thing. Let's see. Okay, I can't see it from this menu, so I have to go back. I have to leave. And then click on party. Click on myself. No, not quite. Character. Ah, there it is. My intelligence is 19. Okay, so I'm not too dumb for that book. So I can go buy that book. I'm not really sure what it does for me. It's really stupid expensive. Okay, so... A treatise in the value of things. So I'm assuming it will give me more knowledge on buying and selling goods so I can get better prices and sell stuff you know for more money so might look into that and then see essays on logic don't really know what that would do for me if my intelligence is already over 10 uh, that one just seems pointless to me mechanical theorems that might increase my me mechanical or building skill, whatever that is. A sword fighting one. Let's try. Let's try this one. This seems pretty useful. It's pretty expensive. I'm pretty much gonna be broke after that. Okay. You can also just go to the arena and just join random melee fights. I'll hop in one of those. I hardly ever, very, just very rarely win these. Because they're so long and endless. People start to gang up on you. Okay, let me take that sword and that shield. I'm not a big fan of pole arms. So that guy's got a two-handed sword. That would be my money right there. See how these guys are kind of just chasing me for no reason? Just gonna start hacking away at these guys. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna take that practice sword there. Come on. Take it, take it, take it. There you go. Okay, uh, one thing I found out is if you walk diagonally on these guys, they can't seem to hit you. Oh, this guy's on me. Oh, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Oh, if I can just... There you go. Oh. Oh, he survived a hit. Normally I can one hit these guys. And this guy's shooting at me with a bow again. Let's see, there's still 27 opponents remaining. I'm already almost dead. Okay, it's looking good, it's looking good. There you go. Alright, it's looking pretty good. I think I got a little technique down. Just kind of stab him in the gut.
That guy was barely in range for me to hit him. The second it puts me up against a bow guy, I'm probably done for. Good thing about these heavy swords, besides the pole arms, they got the longest range. And uh, I'm so highly leveled up in them that I can normally one hit people. Only the toughest guys take a couple of hits. Ooh! See, I gotta watch that arrow. Because that guy's gonna end up messing me up. Headshots in this instant kill. Just took an arrow right there. Ooh! That would have connected. That would have been done for. Ooh! It's almost game over for me right there. Keep getting lucky. Ooh! There's a guy with a bow. Nice! I, I really didn't expect to win that. I'm pretty happy I did, though. Awesome. So he gave me 250 bucks, which is nothing compared to that, like, 4,000-something that I won in the tournament. But anyway, guys, that's going to be all for today. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you want to see more videos of this game... Uh, let me know if you don't want to see more videos of this game. Also let me know. Uh, I know it can be kind of bland sometimes. But uh, regardless, it's still a pretty fun game. But anyway, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.